Okay, so this last problem is going to be the an angular motion type problem with something that is rotating, maybe uh, two gears that are rotating each other, two things that are connected by a belt, or maybe uh, an outer two pulleys that are rigidly connected together. Um, so, so yeah, let's look at this one. All right, for a short period of time, motor uh, ge turns gear A with a constant angular acceleration of 4.5 radians per second start per second squared starting from rest, determine the velocity of the cylinder after three seconds. Okay, so uh, this problem, there are definitely going to be some parts to these problems. Uh, one thing is I want to make sure you can kind of jump from one pulley to another, right? Jump from A to B, B to D, D to C. Uh, so that's what we're going to do here. Now, read carefully uh, because sometimes... I'm given the acceleration and I'm just asked to find the acceleration. In that case, we wouldn't have to do any derivatives. We wouldn't have to do any ex constant acceleration equations, uh, no integrals. Um, if I give you acceleration and ask for acceleration, then then good. Just just jump that acceleration to what you're looking for. For example, if I if I give you the velocity and I ask for the velocity, just jump the velocity. All right. But here, I, I'm given the acceleration, but I'm not asked for acceleration, I'm asked for the velocity. So just pay attention to what you're really given and what you're what I'm asking for. So here, I'm given acceleration, I'm asking for velocity. Okay, I'm going to have to give an equation, right? This is a constant angular acceleration problem, so I'm going to use a constant acceleration equation. Okay, good. Now, it's you can decide, and sometimes some will be easier than others. Some, it doesn't matter, but you need to decide where you want to do your math, where you want to do your constant acceleration equations on. I could go ahead and right from the start, take that acceleration, look at A, it's constant acceleration. I could, I could um, use my constant angular acceleration equations to get the angular velocity, then jump that from A to B, B to D, D to C, and then I'm done, all right? Or what I'm about to do, you could just go ahead and take the initial information and go ahead and jump it to D and do your math, do your equations over here at, at C, all right? So you can do all your equations at A or you can do all your equations at C. They may be equally as easy or difficult. Um, so many times it doesn't matter, but you need to choose and be consistent, be consistent. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and take this initial information, this X acceleration starting from rest. I'm going to jump that to C and I'm going to do my equations at C. So let's jump this. All right, how do I jump this? To go from A to B, I know that the tangential acceleration on the edge of A is equal to the tangential acceleration on the edge of B, right? Those gears are, are not grinding, right? They're both moving together. So RA alpha A equals RB alpha B. Uh, so 75 uh, times 4.5 equals 225 times alpha B, the angular acceleration of B, 1.5 radians per second squared. Does it make sense? That one's going to angular velocity of 4.5 radians per second squared. This one's going to angular velocity of 1.5. It's a ratio of the radiuses. Um, that one's larger. It's spinning with an angular velocity that's slower. Okay, now, when I'm going from outer to inner, very important, and this will be the number one mistake. When I'm going from outer to inner, there's no um, change in the angular information, the angular acceleration, the angular velocity, the angular displacement. It's all the same, right? If, if this is spinning at, you know, four RPMs, this is also spinning at four RPMs. So that's what we're saying. This is accelerating with an angular acceleration of 1.5 radians per second squared. The inner is also, right, this is really one rigid body, and we know that for a rigid body, it only has one angular information, right? So this is also 1.5 radians per second squared. Now, if I'm going from D to C, I'm really going looking at point P prime, all right? So what is the acceleration of P prime? What's the tangential acceleration of P prime? It would also be acceleration of C, it would be R alpha, right? The acceleration of C is R125 millimeters, 
alpha 1.5 radians per second squared. The acceleration of C, 187.5 millimeters per second squared. Constant, right? If this one was constant, then and nothing is changing. That is also constant. And if... If 1 started from rest, if A started from rest, then this also starts from rest. So now I'm going to look at my constant acceleration equations for um, cylinder C starting from rest to find the final velocity. Well, how about this one? Final velocity equals initial velocity plus A T. Final velocity equals initial velocity with 0. A, 187.5 millimeters per second squared, and the time, 3 seconds, 562.5 millimeters per second would be the final velocity. So a few things here. See, see what have, would have happened if you had started at A, done your constant acceleration, angular acceleration equations at A, maybe did um, omega final equals omega initial plus alpha T, Right, we would have um, it started from rest 4.5 times a time of 3, you know, whatever that is, omega final of A. Is that jump that to C and see if you still get 562.5? You should, right? You should. Um, be careful, look back. Sometimes these aren't constant, if it's not a constant equa acceleration equation. Yeah, this one was not a constant, right? 2t cubed is not constant acceleration. So I could not use a constant acceleration equation. I had to use an integral to, to take acceleration to get the velocity. So a few things that were tricky about this one, it did have an initial velocity. So be careful right here. It did have an initial velocity. Um, and then the other thing, um, yeah, just decide where you want to do your math. Um, I decided to do all of this at A, so this is the alpha of A, the time, this is the initial velocity of A, this is the final velocity of A, right, of gear A, and then I jumped it to gear B. Uh, so determine whether it's constant acceleration or not. If it's constant acceleration, you can use constant acceleration equations. If it's not, you might have to use integrals or something. Um, decide where you want to do your equations. For this one, where did I want to do that integral on? Did I want to do it on gear A to begin with? Or I could have I could have gone ahead and jumped this 2t cubed to the acceleration of B and done my equation for B, although I guess I would need to take that 15 and I would have to jump it from A to B as well. Uh, so be careful. So I think this one it was easier to go ahead and do the math at A. And then really just answer what I'm asking. You know, are you given acceleration and asked to find um, velocity? That's what happens a lot of times. Or are you just given the velocity and asked to find the velocity? So you don't need um, those constant acceleration equations or integrals or derivatives. Okay, so this will be the last problem. It'll be a 20-point problem uh, to give you 100 points. Hopefully you all make 100 on the test. All right. Good luck.